Okay, so the goal is to graph this equation. And tangent and cotangent aren't terribly important graphs. And there's a lot of things I just don't like commit to memory, but I have a process in mind. I know that the cotangent function is cosine over sine. That is important. That's something I do commit to memory. And with this, we're going to be able to figure out where the vertical asymptotes are at. So these, the tangent and cotangent both have vertical asymptotes. Since cotangent is cosine over sine, the vertical asymptotes for cotangent are going to be where sine is equal to zero. So ask yourself on the unit circle, where is the first place where sine is equal to zero? It'd be at zero. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take this expression, what we were taking the cotangent of, we're going to set that equal to zero and then solve it. So again, what would make this denominator zero? That's if sine was equal to zero. Is if there was no variations inside of the cotangent, we're going to say, all right, let's have the sine be or the where, where sine is equal to zero. Let's set that equal to the inside. So do the algebra for this one, multiply by two, divide by three pi, we get x equals zero. So in this variation, the first vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals zero. So vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Now, going back to the unit circle, in order to get a vertical asymptote, we're looking where sine is equal to zero. So where is the next place on the unit circle where sine is equal to zero? Right there, right? And in radians, how big is that angle? Pi. So now we're going to set this expression equal to pi. 3 pi x over 2, set equal to pi. Do the algebra on this one to get x by itself, multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by three, divide both sides by pi. So just doing some of the algebra, we get x equals two thirds. That is our second vertical asymptote. In other words, if x is equal to two thirds, we would plug it in for this x. And when you plug it in for this, this is gonna make this orange expression become pi and the cotangent of pi is undefined because cotangent is cosine over sine and the sine of pi was zero, making this whole thing undefined. So x equals two thirds is our second vertical asymptote. We've got to go one more time. We, knew, we need two complete periods. We're going to get one of branch of the cotangent curve in here to get that third branch or the second branch, we need a third vertical asymptote. So ask yourself again, where is the next place where sine is equal to zero? All the way back here at 2 pi. So we're going to set this expression one more time equal to 2 pi. Set this expression equal to 2 pi. What is going to make this x become 2 pi? So like we did before, multiply by 2, divide by 3, divide by pi. So we get 4 over 3. x equals 4 thirds. Vertical asymptote at x equals 4 thirds. So what we've established so far is that if we plug 4 thirds in for x into this equation, it would turn this orange expression into 2 pi. And if we tried to take the cotangent of 2 pi, we'd be taking the cosine of 2 pi over the sine of 2 pi. But since the sine of 2 pi is 0, we get an indeterminate. We get an improper answer. You can't divide by 0. That's what's giving this, this vertical asymptote. Now for the graph itself, we're going to get one of those little swooshes. Remember that for the tangent curve, tangent goes right through the origin. Tangent has a positive slope, so it's going up from left to right, which means when we get to the cotangent, it is not going through the origin. As I can see, we have this vertical asymptote here anyways, and it has a negative slope. So halfway in between these two asymptotes, I'm going to put a point. Halfway between x equals zero and x equals two thirds would be one third. And the graph itself looks like that. This is one period or one branch of our cotangent curve. 
I'm going to do that again for the second period. Halfway between two thirds and four thirds would be three thirds. Three over three is one. And I'm going to draw that same branch in there. And there's the graph. To graph cotangent, we're worried about where the vertical asymptotes are at. And that's the biggest thing. This two out front doesn't really do anything. If it was sine or cosine, we'd say it affects the amplitude. It makes it go up twice as high and twice as low. For this one, it affects the steepness of the graph, but we're not going to pay that much attention to it. So I have the graph looking like this. Maybe if there's like a bigger number in there, I'd have to pay more attention to it. But the two just means it's going up twice as fast. So instead of like this, maybe it's like a lot steeper going through there because the, the, the slope is so much bigger. But that two really doesn't do anything. The only thing that two could do is if it was some negative number up front, then instead of going down, we'd be going up. So this is our graph of this weird looking equation. Just to verify it, let's go on to Desmos. And let's enter in that equation. So again, here's that equation. Y equals two cotangent of three pi x over two. And there it is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because the graph that we have doesn't go super far to the left or right. We're just going from x equals zero to x equals four thirds. And so this is a little more accurate to that if I scroll it over a little bit. Here's the graph they're looking at. This looks like super, it looks like a line through this region. If I zoom out, then you can start to get a better view of how those are actually like curving a little bit. And let me zoom out a little more. This number two out front, it doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm going to delete it and look at how the graph changes. So get rid of the two. And it does this. Like, can you see that subtle little change? With the two in there, it goes up a little steeper. Without the two, it has more of that little swirl to it. That's a, like a subtle little difference. I'm not going to have you get that many points where you can actually tell the difference between just having this or with the two out front. So this two, again, affects the steepness. That's just more detail than we need. So here is a graph for this one. That's how we did a cotangent curve. I'm going to scroll over here to the right. Let's try a tangent curve. What if it's y equals um, 2 plus tangent of 3x? Our goal is to graph this one. y equals 2 plus the tangent of 3x, which again, it looks like a kind of a weird looking equation. It's not sine. It's not cosine. There's a number added. There's a number multiplied by the x. However, we're going to be able to figure out where this thing goes by locating those asymptotes. Tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. To get these asymptotes, we want to know what makes this denominator zero. What makes cosine of x equal to zero? So if I'm thinking about it on the unit circle, where is the first place where the cosine is equal to zero? Where's the first place where cosine is going to be zero? And you really need to know your unit circle in order to do these. Otherwise, it's really going to slow you down. I would say it's at pi over two. Right here, the cosine is equal to pi over two. So we're going to set this expression, this 3x, equal to pi over two. This is going to help us find that first vertical asymptote. Divide both sides by three, and we get x equals pi over six. Oops. So that is our first vertical asymptote. Next, we need to get more vertical asymptotes. The next place where the cosine is equal to zero. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because tangent is sine over cosine. 
If cosine is equal to zero, that makes it undefined. That's where those vertical asymptotes are coming from. So I want to know in general, as if there were no variations, where would cosine of x be equal to zero? The next place is going to be right here, straight down at three pi over two. So we're going to set this orange expression equal to three pi over two. Solve this equation for x. So you're going to mold, or divide both sides by three and we get x equals pi over two. There is our next vertical asymptote. Two vertical asymptotes give us just one of these little periods, one of the swooshes. So we need to do one more. We had pi over two, three pi over two. The next place where cosine is equal to zero is at five pi over two. So three x is equal to five pi over two. Divide both sides by three and we get X equals five pi over six. So that's the, like the majority of the work we have to do for these problems, finding those asymptotes, find those asymptotes, because once you have the asymptotes, everything's really going to fall into place. So there's my graph X equals pi over six. Here's one of our vertical asymptotes X equals pi over two. and x equals five pi over six. Unlike the last example that we did, this one doesn't have a number multiplied by the tangent, so I'm not worried about the steepness of it, and I really wasn't anyways, but this says two plus that. When you add a number like this, that's going to make it shift up. This one's gonna shift up by two. So up one, up two, I'm going to put this new horizontal axis. So again, we call it the midline, the line of equilibrium. Because the graph shifted up by two, I want to make sure I include that in there. And now between these vertical asymptotes, I need to find the halfway point. I'm going to estimate that's about right here. Halfway between one pi over six and three pi over six. would be two pi over six, this would be pi over three for the X value. So I'm averaging those together, add them together and divide by two. That's how I'm coming up with this middle point. And then now just draw the curve, go through this shifted up point and there's the tangent. Tangent has a positive curve. So from left to right, it's going up. And because the graph shifted up by two, that's why I'm using this point rather than just on the X axis. That's one period, one more, go halfway between, halfway between pi over two and five pi over six. That'd be three pi over six and five pi over six. What's right between those? Be four pi over six, which we could simplify to two pi over three. Put your point on that horizontal axis and then we can draw our curve. These tangent cotangent curves are all about the asymptotes. I can't stress that enough. How do you find where the asymptotes are at? Well, again, I always go back to this. Tangent is sine over cosine. Where did cosine equal zero? That's where I got these values. These are the places where cosine was equal to zero. And then I set what the expression was inside of the tangent equal to each one of those. Solve, and those become your vertical asymptotes. And the only reason why we have this dotted line up is because this time the graph shifted up by two. And remember, tangent goes up from left to right. It has a positive curve. So there is our graph for that one. All right, next thing, we want to write the equation for the trig function that has this information. And the first thing it says is that this is a cosecant equation. So I know y equals cosecant of x, taken care of. All right, it's cosecant, write the cosecant. The period equals pi. I'm going to come back to that one in a moment. The amplitude is two. And to get the amplitude in there, I multiply that right in front of the trig function. That shouldn't be too difficult either. It's shifting down by three. So I could do a minus three at the very end. The reason why I generally don't do that is because it might look confusing. Does this minus three go right next to the X is the outside of the trig function. So I usually stick it out front. So negative three plus that, this is your downshift of three. Now the last two things, the period and the shift to the right are the more difficult ones to put in there. Let's go to the period first. 
we have the formula that says period is equal to two pi divided by B, where B is the number that goes right in front of the X. And if you do a little bit of algebra with this one, you would get that B is equal to two pi divided by the period. Multiply by B, divide by period, we get to this equation. So plug pi in for the period, two pi divided by pi is two. So our B value, the number that goes right in front of this X is two. 2 pi divided by the period is the number that goes right in front of x. Then the last part, it's going to the right by pi over 2. And we haven't looked at these shifts quite in this way yet. But if it's going right by pi over 2, we're going to have to subtract it. Just like we did for all of those other um, parent functions from before. If it's shifting to the side, it goes right next to the x. And you've got to make sure you put parentheses around it. Because if you didn't, it wouldn't work out correctly. Like it's. 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 2. This is shifting it right. This 2 is affecting its period. The 2 in front of that is the amplitude. And then the minus 3 out front is what's shifting the entire thing down by 3. So there's the equation that has that much information on it. Go ahead and pause for just a second. And can you try the bottom one? Secant, the period is 4 fifths. The amplitude is 3, shifting up by 1 and write by one-fifth. Can you write that equation? So it is a secant curve. Amplitude is three. It shifts up one. It goes right by one fifth. So I'm going to do x minus one fifth. And the last thing is the period is equal to four fifths. Period is two pi over b or the b value. The number that goes right in front of this x is two pi divided by the period. And we have some fraction work to do here. To get the four-fifths out of the denominator, we would multiply by 5 over 4 times 5 over 4. That's 10 pi over 4. If we multiply the entire numerator, 10 pi over 4 would come out to 5 pi over 2. Okay, last set here. Our goal is to write an equation again, but we're not given all the information, told that it's a secant or this is the period or the amplitude. We are just given the graph, and from this graph, we're supposed to write the equation. Suggestion number one, can you picture what the shadow graph looks like? Can you give a trace of that one? So because there's this vertical asymptote, that means there was originally a point there on our shadow curve, and here, and here, and here, as well as there. Those points were there originally. That's how those vertical asymptotes came into play. Also, the minimums and maximums that are on those red curves were on the original graph. So if I start using a dotted line to connect those, I can look back and see what the original graph was before we reflected it, before we took its reciprocal to get this either secant or cosecant graph. So now as I look at that green dotted one, is that a sine or a cosine? Sine. What's the reciprocal of sine? So this red is a cosecant curve. And let's see what else we can figure out about that cosecant curve. Um, it's shifted, right? How much did it shift up by? Two. So I could put plus two at the end or a two plus out front. What's the amplitude? Three. three, right? From the midline, up three, down three. So three goes right there. 
and it is a sine curve, right? I don't have to worry about shifting side to side. That's great. The last thing we have to think about is what number goes right in front of the X. This comes from the period. So as you see this, there is an up and there's a down. So this represents the period going from X equals zero to X equals 12 is the complete period. So our period is 12. Every 12 in the X direction, we go through a complete period. We have an up and we have a down. That's going to help us figure out the B value. Now, this is like the problems we looked at earlier. We're, we weren't given the period. We have to figure it out. B is equal to 2 pi divided by 12. B is 2 pi divided by the period. And if you simplify that, pi over 6. Uh, it was given to us. All the 6, 12, 18, 20, all these numbers are given to us. Yeah, without those numbers, we wouldn't be able to figure it out. We're we're given these numbers across the bottom. Okay, now I want you to try this one. Okay, ready? <laughs> There's the shadow graph. Is that green a sine or a cosine? Cosine. We could look at it either way because like if I started from like right here and started going with it, I could say that's a sine curve, but then I'd have to worry about shifting it to the right. And I don't want to do that if I don't have to. So yeah, I would say this is a cosine curve that's in green because the green is a cosine. What kind of graph is the red? What's the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. So the red is a secant curve. Is there any shift up or down? We see that this is at negative two. So yeah, down two. What is the amplitude? How far are these points from the horizontal axis? Two. So our amplitude is two. The last thing is to get the number in front of the X. We have to figure out the period in pi, three pi and five pi. Those are all given to us. Those aren't numbers we had to come up with. Those are given to us. So the period I could say starting right here, there's a down, there's an up. So there is the length of the period. How far is that? Four pi. Four pi. So our period is equal to four pi. So B is equal to two pi divided by that period. Simplify that one half. There is our equation. This is a challenging problem. There's the process that I would use to go through it. It started off with recognizing what the shadow graph looked like and then looking for how is it shifted up or down? What's the amplitude? Figure out those numbers first. And because we didn't have to shift side to side, to side at all, it was finding out the period, and that's this orange distance. That's going to help us figure out the number that goes right in front of the X.